Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all good. Thank you so much for the love lately. You've all been incredible and I'm so close to 50,000. I cannot believe it. Do you guys remember when I manifested it and I said I'd be at 50k by August with absolutely no thoughts whatsoever that that would even happen and here we are not even mid-September and I'm nearly at 50k. I just cannot believe it. Anyway, moving on to the video. I am going back down the Halloween route and I have to say this is my favourite resin video to date. I am obsessed with the results. We are going for a Halloween gothic rich fairy tale romantic kind of style and I'm obsessed. <laughs> I'm going to be using the same two colours again, the Fossil Grey and the Rose from Resin 8. And if you saw the last two videos, I'm going to make sure I've got a lot more clear resin this time. Clear resin with the foil mixed in. And we are going for what I like to call the shove it all in method and see what happens. Just shove it all in nicely, delicately place it in, I mean. <laughs> We're not throwing things in. But I've got so much here. I'm going to be using the same tattoos that you would have seen in the trays a couple videos back. I've got all of these pre-made crosses and wings from this amazing mold that I've got. Everything in the video will be linked below. The cross, the wing mold, the, the actual trinket tray molds, the tattoos, it's all linked below. So if you like what you see here, then you're going to be able to recreate it. I've got everything in my Amazon storefront for you. And these keys are so fun. And I figured chuck it all in, in a nice delicate way and see what we can create with layers and textures and depth. And we're throwing in some plastic spiders because it is Halloween. Massive thank you and shout out to all of my patrons over on my Patreon page. They helped me so much with this project. I was asking their advice every step of the way and they were able to help me decide what to do next and what colours to use on the backing and things like that. So guys, thank you so much. Your support is incredible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, I have got the details linked below and yeah, Let's get on with the voiceover, Claire. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do, you would have seen me do this before, is lay my tattoos face down in the trays. Now, these are temporary tattoos for skin. I got them from Amazon. They are linked down below. And they work in exactly the same way as they would work if you were applying them to your skin. If you haven't seen the previous video, I will link it here. But the same principle applies. You place them down. You put some water on the back. I'm just using a damp cloth to dab the backs with water. That releases the paper from the tattoo and it is that straightforward. And I did the same thing, exact thing again and I left the serial numbers on. So I do go in with some sellotape and take the serial numbers off of those corners because I forgot again. But I'm going with romantic roses for the base of these tattoos. I figured... I, I wasn't sure at this point if I'd add more, but at this point, it's all I wanted. I'm just getting rid of the butterflies because I'm not a butterfly fan at all. Um, but of course, each to their own. I'm just going for that rose. Yeah, the romantic part. <laughs> I'm using Vista Cascade in this video. It is the best resin. Honestly, I love it for anything this deep. So trinket trays, coasters, it is ideal. Of course, I do use Glass Cast 3 for top coating, but if you're interested in a resin that does this kind of depth, like a one centimeter, two centimeter depth, this is absolutely perfect resin. First thing I'm gonna do now, I'm laying down some clear. I'm laying down some clear because all of these inclusions, all of these bits and bobs that I'm gonna be putting in, I want them to be visible from the other side when I demold. Now what you could do is lay down some clear, maybe wait half an hour before you add any more, and that would guarantee that you'll definitely get a clear picture when you flip it out. But these wings, I absolutely love them. They were cast in black resin, but then I added some silver paint over the tops just to highlight the wings, and I love them. I gave them a coat of resin with my hands before I laid them down just to try and avoid as many air bubbles as possible and I just placed them in the tray at an angle that I thought would look pretty when we demold. And I did the same for all of the other pieces. Now I'm going for a combination of dark gothic black silver but also 
really lovely soft golds and pinks and things like that as well. So again, whatever you decide to chuck in, if we are going for the whole throw it in and shove it all in method, there are so many things. Honestly, when I demolded, I thought oh, I could have used some cogs to go a little bit steampunk. I could have used oh so many little things, you know. And even potion bottles, I've got teeny tiny miniature potion bottles. They might have worked in the rims. So have a think about anything you've got laying around or all of these wings and crosses were made with leftover resin. So this is what I mean by if you've ever got any leftover resin, grab a mold because you never know when it's all going to come in handy. So carrying on with the video again, here you see me just placing things down into the clear resin so at this moment, I'm liking the placement of them all. I'm really enjoying and I, I kind of looked around thinking, should I add more? I don't really feel like I need more at this point. So I pretty much left it as you're seeing it right now. I then went ahead and I mixed up my vintage rose resin and I mixed up that grey. That grey is still my absolute favourite. Now what I don't want to happen is I don't want it to take over like it has done in my last two videos. I really do and I'm aiming for a lot more clear. I'm aiming for a lot more visibility through the piece. So we've got some depth in with the foil and yeah. So I'm going really easy on the pink and the grey. Look at this, it's so pretty. It does look like a rose, doesn't it? I am just mixing up my foil. I'm pretty much out of foil, but I do have some flat foil in sheets. So what I've been doing is I've just been putting some sheets into that pot and I've kind of been shaking them up to create my own foil flakes and it's just working out really, really well. So here I am just pouring the pink. I did like in the last trays that you saw, I loved the fact that the tattoos had pink behind them and I think that was important, but oh, I definitely got some gorgeous results with clear resin behind the tattoos. So that has inspired me to do a tray, which I will definitely be doing probably at the end of September now. I'm going to be doing a large tray, but I'm going to be working backwards. So my first pour is going to be the bottom of the tray, if that makes sense. It's going to give me more visibility to be able to see what's happening. So again, I'm just making sure that I've got the clear. So the tops and the bottoms you can see of the trays are the clear areas. And I'm making sure that I have got so much clear available. And yeah, this was my worry that the pink and the gray would then take over again. But I'm not filling these trays up because those inclusions, they need to stay flat. And if I fill the tray up right now, they might float and I don't want that. So here we are. I've left a good solid gap of around three to four mil at the top of each tray. And here they are. I just, I'm obsessed. I absolutely love them. So thanks again to my patrons. They actually chose the backing color. They had so many suggestions I hadn't actually thought of. So I used white. One of the suggestions was white and I loved that idea. They did say do not go with black, it might really take away from everything that's in the tray, you might lose the detail. So out of all of their choices, I actually went with white with a little bit of grey mica powder in there, but don't do that, it didn't work, pointless, <laughs> and you'll actually see it. it, it started to float, the mica powder did not mix well at all, but... Here I am just pouring the white on the backs of the trinket trays. I don't show you all three because they're all the same. And then it's time to demold. So this is 24 hours later and it is time to demold. And you can see those two there with the lines. That's the gray mica that decided he's just gonna go his own way and he's just gonna float to the top and that is fine. But look at these. Oh my gosh, my heart. When I demolded this and I could see the spider clearly through that clear resin, no bubbles. And I was like, I'm obsessed. And can you see how the tattoo just goes over that clear area gently? Yeah, absolutely love it. I lost some details on the wings, but it still has this kind of whimsical, romantic feeling about it. But yeah, I am loving it. Absolutely love it. And that spider is probably my favorite little area. It's just so different, different to anything I've ever done. And yeah, some of the clear, again, it kind of, it, it, it stayed there, which I was so happy about. So this is that effect where I can see depth and I can see things through the clear. And yeah, I was, yeah, mad chuffed. Like I, 
yeah, I won't keep talking about this one particular tray, but they were all, they all blew me away. This one here, I have such a gorgeous chunk of clear down this one end. And I think maybe the foil helped to block the pink and grey from getting to the key. Love it. I love the fact that one rose is pink and the other two roses are grey. Could not have planned it. This cross, it's unbelievable the way it just, you can see pretty much all of the detail on it. Guys, I just want to do more now. I almost wish I wasn't going on holiday so I could just sit and do this all day, every day. But I'm definitely going to be doing more. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I am going to, of course, be giving these all a top coat. So if you're seeing holes at this point, don't worry about them at all. This is the final one. Now, I feel like this one is cute, but I'm not loving the way the resin took them wings over again i should have waited longer i should have just put them in the clear waited before i added more resin um but live and learn this is the first time trying the shove it all in method um but i'm loving the key and i'm not loving the cross so this is what got me thinking do i leave them like this or do i shove shove do i go for it do i think do you know what i've never done anything like this before let's just throw it all in i went back to my patrons and i said what do you think should i add some color to the roses should i add more and they all said yes add color to the roses bring them out a little bit and that made me think of okay i'm going to be top coating these anyway I might as well shove more in while I'm top coating, make them layered, make them tactile, make them so much more textured. And, and they still remain trinket trays, even though I'm going to add so many more elements to them, they are still going to function as trays. And this is what my plan is. I'm going to put some things back in. I'm going to add more tattoos because at this point I don't want to stop. I don't know when to stop. The downside, <laughs> when I asked my patrons for advice, they pretty much all said they don't know when to stop. So <laughs> I really, I really thought, okay, that's just, that's just a sign that I can keep going. It's permission from them and from myself that I can just keep going, have fun with it and see what results we can get. I decided to go for a crown. I mean, I don't know, you know, I just thought it's romantic, right? It's, it's kind of regal, a little bit vintagey. So I decided to cut up some tattoos out of their originals. So I'm just taking little elements of the tattoos that I like to put into their, yeah, into areas where I just feel like I want something, something. I want something in that space. I want something in that gap. It didn't matter to me if they were upside down, sideways, forwards facing, like it really didn't matter what way around I put them. But I... I am so happy I decided to just keep on going. That large cross is stunning in itself. And here they are at this point. And then I thought, I could add more. <laughs> I could add more. This literally is the, the, the video that just keeps on getting more and more. And you're probably sitting there thinking, Claire, stop now. Like, stop now. Enough's enough. But I figured I've not done this before. So why not go all in? Yeah, go hard or go home. That's what we say here. Let me know if you guys have a saying like that, where you're from, <laughs> go hard or go home. Yeah, so here I am. I decided at this point I could use Posca pens to highlight the roses. I could use my gold deco color pen to highlight any other things, you know, the crown, the crosses, just to add detail to these tattoos that isn't already there. Then I went in with some white. I added some details to the leaves. Now, disclaimer guys, I'm not a fine artist. I'm not a fine art drawer, painter. These are just little details that will bring out the details of the tattoos. Um, and I am utterly obsessed with all of this. I just did minuscule dots around this cross just to bring it out a bit. And yeah, I ended up not putting too much detail in the roses, just added some white. Then I went in with some glitter glue. I highlighted the crown, I highlighted the cross. And 
yeah, it all works. That's the thing. Wait for your glitter glue. Wait for your pens to dry. Everything must be dry before you put the top coat in. Now, the top coat is going to serve as two things. It's going to give it a glossy finish, but it's also going to seal in those tattoos. And I figured while I'm here, I might as well add more because... <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Honestly, I'm laughing because I just didn't know when I was going to stop. I felt like I could be here for days adding and then it's going to just, yeah, it's not going to be a tray anymore. But to make sure that it still stays a tray, to make sure that it's still usable, it's a functional item. I thought I would cover up the elements that I don't like. So here you see me just putting the resin in. It's the same kind of top coating system. Only put enough in to cover the base. Don't put too much in. So you've still got a lip around. It's a, still a functional tray. Where I've put the items in, the crosses, the keys and the wings, there are areas where you can see it perfectly through the clear resin. That is what I was going for. But there are elements of it where I'm just not keen because the resin has taken over. Again, wait till you pour your resin if you're gonna try this technique. And I decided at this point, well, I might as well put back the wings. I might as well add additional additional inclusions on top um, to cover up the parts that I don't like. So here I am just using my heat tool to get rid of all of the bubbles. Um, there weren't that many, but you do not want bubbles if this is your top coat. And here I am. I'm thinking, let's, let's just shove more in because at this point I'm in love. I just feel like it's gothic romance. I'm going to cover those wings, those wings in that tray. I was not keen. The resin covered them up to the point where they weren't aesthetically pleasing for me to look at. However, the spider's perfect. I love that I can still see the spider. And that cross is also perfect. I love the cross in that tray. And then I thought, throw a key on there because you can, because we can. And I didn't like these wings here. I didn't have any more gold wings so I actually had a pair in black and I painted them with my gold marker to fit in with the gold that I was going for. So here you see me just placing them down and what you do is you push them real hard um, and they get, they get a bit of a suction thing going on so they don't move. And here you see me placing a gold cross and another key and honestly this is where I needed someone to walk in and stop me. But I stopped. This is it. This is the final product. I am obsessed. I love them. I'm going to do more. I I honestly think these are the prettiest, prettiest resin pieces I have ever created. And I know for a fact they're not going to be to everyone's cup of tea, but I am obsessed. So let me know what you think at this stage. Thank you so much if you've lasted this long. This video is a long one. We're nearly at 18 minutes. So if you're still here, you rock. You absolutely rock. And yeah, you're all legends if you've made it this far. So thank you. Love it. I can't stop staring at them. I've, I've held them in my hand for so long and I just cannot stop. So here they are at a glance with all of the things. We've got the Posca pens, the gold pens, the glitter glue. We've got everything. We've got all of the little inclusions. We've got keys. We've got spiders. So much. Let me know your thoughts and what colours you would use. I am definitely going to try this again. So thank you so much for all of your support. And yeah, do not forget to leave me a comment down below. I am still on 100% reply rate because I love hearing from you guys and I want you to know that I appreciate every single one of you and that is why at the moment I am trying my hardest to still reply to everybody but do drop me a comment and of course if you like what you see hit that subscribe button something I never ask anybody to do hit that subscribe button turn on the notification bell so you do not miss a video and check the description box because everything is going to be in there and I will see you all in the next video